Hello, friends. Welcome back to our next video podcast. And the topic for today is comparing aripiprazole, Abilify, with brexpiprazole, Rexel T. We all know that these are partial dopamine agonist medication, but are they any different from each other? This is what I will talk about in this podcast. I will try to compare if they are different in terms of their indication, efficacy, side effect, or something else. But before I do that, I just want to take a few seconds and inform you all that we are now available on few social media platforms. So please follow us on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube page. And this video podcast will be available on our YouTube page also. I think YouTube channel, that's what we call. <laughs> so let's begin our discussion on comparing Drexpiprazole and Aripiprazole. And this is also available as one of our course chapter on Physician's Guide for Clinical Psychiatry course. So please consider subscribing if you have not done already. So let's begin our podcast for today. So let's begin this series on comparing medication. You must have seen we did uh, lectures on comparing mood stabilizers, comparing antidepressants. So this is our first chapter on comparing antipsychotics. And here we will be discussing main difference between aripiprazole and brexpiprazole. I will be talking this difference in many areas, but the first one that we will begin is their FDA indications. What are these two medications approved for? So this is a table that I will be using during entire podcast. So we all know that both medications are approved for schizophrenia, but Aripiprazole is the only one that's approved for bipolar disorder and only for acute manic or mixed phase management, not for the depressed phase management. Whereas Brexpiprazole is not approved yet for bipolar disorder, both medications are approved as an adjunct treatment for major depressive disorder management. And Aripiprazole also carries indication for autistic disorder associated irritability management and Tourette's disorder. So these are the main difference in indication between these two medication. Primarily schizophrenia and adjunct major depressive disorder treatment for both. So this, this is difference number one. But there is one more difference that aripiprazole is also used as an inject injection for agitation associated with schizophrenia and acute manic or mixed phase of bipolar 1 associated agitation management. And actually there is one more difference. All these diagnoses that we, are, we talked about so far, this is mentioned in adult population, but aripiprazole also carry indication for pediatric population for schizophrenia, bipolar, autistic disorder related irritability and Tourette's disorder. Whereas brexpiprazole was not studied, I believe, in pediatric population. So this is our first section, indication differences for both medication. Second difference is their available formulations. So we are back to this table. The first thing is both are available as tablet formulations. Aripiprazole and Brexpiprazole have, I think, similar number of formulations in terms of tablets. So Aripiprazole is available in 2 milligram, 5 milligram, 10 milligram, 15, 20, and 30 and brexpiprazole in 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, 2, 3, and 4 milligram. But here is the difference. Aripiprazole is the only one out of these two 
that's also available in ODT formulation, oral disintegrating tablets. This is of an important uh, benefit for compliance issue. It's an important uh, for patients with difficulty swallowing, even with gastric issue, gastric surgery, gastric bypass, which brexpiprazole is not available as. Aripiprazole is also available as oral solution, same benefit that we talked about with ODTs. And the injection formulation is available for acute agitation management. And we all know the long acting injectable. There are two long acting injectable formulations available for aripiprazoles, which is very, very beneficial for patients with compliance issue. Once a month injectable formulations are available. But brexpiprazole has none of these formulations yet, I will say. So this is a main difference number two in these two medications. Now, difference number three is in terms of their mechanism of action. So how are they different? Let's go back to this table again. I think this difference is of most clinical relevance, primarily in terms of the side effect profile and some benefits also. The first is what we all know that these both medications are partial dopamine agonist. And there are many dopamine receptors, primarily D2 and D3 here that we will talk about. Brexfiprazole is also a partial agonist at D2 and D3, but more at D3 than D2. It has less intrinsic activity at D2 receptors compared to D3. The other medication that has uh, effect on D3 receptor is cariprazine, Vralar. We recently published a topic on this on our website, which uh, we know cariprazine is also approved for all phases of bipolar now. But coming back to this topic, so more activity on D3 than D2, what does this mean clinically? This means that brexpiprazole has less potential to cause EPS symptoms, akathisia, compared to aripiprazole. That's one different. And the other difference, which is actually more clinical, but studies have not shown this yet, is medications with effect on D3 receptors are known to have beneficial procognitive effects. But we'll talk uh, very soon. Studies were not very promising for brexpiprazole in this one. If you know any study, please let me know. Please post below. But as of now, it's more of a less akathisia benefit for brexpiprazole compared to aripiprazole. So that's number one difference in mechanism of action. The second is the serotonin receptor, primarily 5-HT1A partial agonism. Both of them does do that, but brexpiprazole is more potent on this one. And the second, the third thing is, there is an antagonism of serotonin 2A receptor. And this applies to both of these medications. But again, brexpiprazole is more potent on serotonin 2A receptor. And studies have shown that this effect, more potency of serotonin 1A partial agonism and serotonin 2A antagonism is responsible for anti-anxiety benefit of brexpiprazole. And the other things that these medications work on is alpha receptors. So both are alpha-1 antagonist. But again, brexpiprazole have high affinity for alpha-1b, which translates to less akathisia side effect for this medication. And last is both are histamine-1 antagonist with moderate affinity, not high affinity at this point. But this is the third main difference between these two medications in terms of their mechanism of action. And looks like based on this, brexpiprazole should have less akathisia risk and some anti-anxiety benefit compared to aripiprazole. So this is number three. Number four, 
is commonly observed adverse reaction. Now what this means is the incidence of these adverse events should be at least more than or equal to 5% or at least twice that of placebo in the studies. And I will summarize them in this table comparing aripiprazole and brexpiprazole and I will be actually comparing them based on the disorders they are used for because side effect changes based on the disorder and the dosing that we use in disorders. Starting with schizophrenia, this is I think most important difference. Aripiprazole have more common risk of agathesia, whereas brexpiprazole have more side effect of weight gain here. For major depressive disorder, same thing stayed you know, there are more side effect profile here, akathisia, restlessness, poor sleep, constipation, fatigue, and blurred vision. And brexpiprazole have weight gain and akathisia. And in bipolar, because brexpiprazole is not approved for bipolar, studies were only done for aripiprazole. Same side effect profile, EPS symptom, restlessness, tremor, and sedation there. So one thing that we are noticing here is, Akathisia more with aripiprazole and weight gain is seen more with brexpiprazole. Something to be mindful of. Now, drug interaction, cytochrome P450. Going for both medication, they both go through same cytochrome P450, which is 2D6 and 3A4. Now, I will just very briefly summarize how this will be clinically relevant. And what I'm going to say right now is all available in their package inserts. So package insert for both aripiprazole and brexpiprazole tells us to change the dosing of these medication if following are present. First they say give one quarter of the usual dose, one fourth of the usual dose if either of the two conditions are present. Now first condition is that a person is a poor 2D6 metabolizer and you are giving them a strong 3A4 inhibitor. Well there are many 3A4 inhibitors like itraconazole, clarithromycin and many more. Be mindful of those inhibitors. So if this combination is there and you're giving them either aripiprazole or brexiprazole, reduce the dose to one quarter of what we will give them usually. So this is number one. Number two is if you combine two medications together, which is 2D6 and 3A4 inhibitors. I think this is common sense. And we talked about 3A4 inhibitors. Similarly, there are many 2D6 inhibitors especially our antidepressants like fluoxetine, paroxetine, and other non-psychiatric medications like cunidine and many more. If this combination is there, one-fourth of the dose. The second is giving half of the usual dose. And again, there are two conditions, which is first, somebody is a poor metabolizer for 2D6, or you're giving them either 2D6 inhibitor or 3A4 inhibitor. Again, common sense. Now last is, you have to give double the usual dose over one to two week period. When will you do that? When you're giving them three or four inducers, like carbamazepine, rifampin, and others. So this was a very brief overview of that. So these are the main five differences that we should be mindful of between these medication. And I will end this podcast with a study that I found Actually, there were not, not many head-to-head -head studies comparing these medication. I was able to only find one study. Please tell me if you know of more studies by replying below or messaging me directly. So this study actually compared brexpiprazole and aripiprazole for acute management of schizophrenia on inpatient unit. This was a six-week treatment phase study in this Patients were randomly assigned in a 2 to 1 ratio to either receive a targeted dose of brexpiprazole titrated to 3 mg per day or aripiprazole titrated to 15 mg per day. 
please let me know if you need the titration schedule I can post that they had a very nice ske dosing schedule for both medication to reach this dosing after that they had a 30 day follow up phase after that to see what happens and I'm going to summarize the results here and I think these results will summarize the result of this podcast also so they found they were both equally effective in terms of efficacy to reduce schizophrenia symptoms. The PANS positive and negative syndrome scale total score were like this respectively 22 minus 22.9 for brexpiprazole and reduction in minus 19.4 for eripiprazole. So first thing is they are equally efficacious so difference is not there. But where is the difference then? Here, number two, impulsivity. They found a modest reduction in impulsivity, more observed for Brexpiprazole, but not for Aripiprazole. Very interesting thing. I will not go into details of that because this is an important topic. We all know how dopamine agonist and dopamine partial agonist have potential of causing impulsivity, OCD-like symptoms getting worse. But this study showed modest reduction with Brexpiprazole. So I will keep this in mind when choosing one over another. And third, the cognitive symptom. You remember I talked about the pro-cognitive benefit of D3 receptor uh, partial agonism. They did not found any difference in either of the treatment in terms of cognitive symptom score. Now, how about side effect? Akathisia was lower for Braxfiprazole than Aripiprazole. You can see the difference. 21% in Aripiprazole patient had Akathisia and 9% in Braxfiprazole patient had Akathisia. So there is a big difference. How about weight gain that we talked about recently? Now, the incidence of weight gain of more than 7% was higher for Brexfiprazole, 35% of the patient, whereas 19% of Aripiprazole had weight gain relative to the mean change. So Aripiprazole is not a weight neutral medication either. Like we know we all used to say in past how Aripiprazole is the weight neutral, but it's not. But Brexpiprazole have more weight gain potential. So this is a main study. Um, you can find references below. But this is what this podcast will summarize also. So let's end this session by summarizing everything here. Which is, when will you prescribe one medication over other? First is the age group, very important. Aripiprazole is the only one which is approved for pediatrics compared to Brexpiprazole. Second is the diagnosis, which is uh, both are approved for schizophrenia and uh, adjunct for MDD, but not for bipolar. So if somebody is bipolar, um, autism, Tourette's, you will prefer Aripiprazole in those cases. Alternate route of admin administration, which is if a person needs either ODT formulation, liquid formulation, you will be preferring obviously aripiprazole in those or other antipsychotics. Or somebody with gastric bypass, gastric surgery and those kind of issues. And then long acting injectable is one of the important thing I think these days aripiprazole have that. But the difference in terms of side effect profile, akathisia more for aripiprazole, weight gain more for brexpiprazole, be mindful of that. Patient with comorbid anxiety disorder, uh, theoretically speaking, brexpiprazole should have some benefit as anti-anxiety. And last but not least is the questionable pro-cognitive benefit, but studies have not shown this to be more effective for Brexpiprazole or Aripiprazole yet. So, this was our podcast for today. Uh, for our course subscribers, you will get access to all the slides and also all the references that I talked about with either 
PDF or PubMed article for them. If you have not subscribed to our um, course yet, please join us and do not hesitate in contacting me with any questions. This is Dr. Harvinder Singh. Thank you again. Have a nice day. Bye.